selection. Praise God. What a great choir. Excellent, excellent. Praise God. Yes, once again, my name is Brother Elijah, and I got my reader here, Brother, Brother Cliff. And today's class is a, it's a class that I wanted to do for a long time. And this class is going to show us what we ought to do. This class is going to identify us and what we're supposed to be doing and what we continue supposed to be doing with, with this word throughout this, this world. And let's go ahead and read the law and then we get into this lesson. Let's go ahead and read Exodus 20. Read it when you get there. Go ahead. And, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Yes. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Mm -hmm. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. That's right. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Mm -hmm. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That's right. You want to be blessed, you got to keep this Sabbath, right? Go ahead. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. That's right. What's wrong with these law system, brother? Nothing, right? Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the uh, 12th chapter, and we're going to read two there. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, read it when you get there. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments, mm -hmm. for this is the whole duty of man. And it absolutely means to fear the Lord. Let's go to... Um, I get 14. Okay, read 14. For go God ahead. shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That's right. Can't hide nothing from the Lord. Let's go to Revelation Revelation 22, and we're going to read two there. We're going to read 14 and 15. Read it. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may, may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. That's right. So today's lesson, Israel is the salt of the earth. And what do salt do? Salt is a preservative, right? Guess what? If you consider yourself being Israel, guess what? 
you're supposed to preserve the, old, the whole entire earth. That is your duty. That is your job. But you have other people out there that's trying to be you. You know, you got Islam. You got all these people trying to be you, right? But they don't have the right word, you know? We have the right word, right? Because what? We read directly from this book, and we believe that's what's written in this book, right? But God said you are the salt of the earth. So salt gives flavor, gives taste. So where is your flavor, Israel? Huh? Where is your taste, right? When we going to um, discover these things, right? And, it's, and what salt also do, it cleanse. So we're supposed to go out there and clean the entire earth, clean the bad doctrine that's in this world. That's our duty. That's what we're supposed to do, sister and brother, right? But no further ado, let's go and start this at John, the fourth chapter. Because you got all these teachings out there, but it ain't coming from this book. Right? So we're going to go into the book and see who is the salt of the earth. I already give you a clue. But let's, because we have to read the book, right? So that's what we're going to do. Let's go to John, the fourth chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. And we're going to do some skipping. So this is um, the Samaritan woman when Jesus went to the well, Jacob's well. But we're not here for that. We're here for, for seeing why we, what is our duty. Go ahead, read it. Pick it up at verse 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Mm -hmm. Skip down to 19. So what is this water? Go ahead. The woman said unto him, sir... I perceive that thou art a prophet. Mm -hmm. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. That's right. Read on. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor in Jer at Jerusalem worship the Father. That's right, because she don't know the word of God, right? So read on. You worship, you know not what. Mm -hmm. We know what we worship. Yeah, we I'm should know what we worship, Israel. We should know this word. Go ahead. For salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of the Jews. We, we know who the Jews are. Ain't that Israel? Yes, sir. Right. You finished reading that? I finished reading that. Was 22. Yeah. All right. All right. For salvation is of the Jews. Right? We're going to see all about that. Let's go to um, 1 Peter, the second chapter. Because... Peter, you know, he, he didn't have the New Testament. He was reading the Old Testament, and he saw this, right? Let's see what he saw. Um, First Peter, the second chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 5. All right, we're going to read one verse, and then we're going to skip to nine. Go ahead. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And that's what we ought to do, right? Go ahead. Skip, skip. down to nine. Verse nine. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's right. You are a peculiar people. You are chosen people, right? But what are you chosen for? You're supposed to be the salt of the earth, sister and brother. That's what you're chosen for, right? But we're going to go back to Exodus. Um, we're going to go to um, Deuteronomy 7 to see where he got this from. And... Who spoke to us there? Because God is serious about it. It's his job that he gave us. Because God is a, is a covenant God. When he makes a covenant, that's it. It's done sealed with blood, right? He ain't going to change from it. He's not going to turn from it. We are the one that turning from it, right?
Pick it up at verse 1. Deuteronomy 7, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Man, this is the love God has for us, man. He casts out nations just to have us, our Israel, to put in the land, right? That was not even our land, but God loved you so much, he gave you that land, right? Go ahead. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, mm-hmm. thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt not make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Well, that's right. Let's get down Skip down to um, verse 5. But thus shall you deal with them. Mm-hmm. You shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. And that's what we got to do today. Not, not to destroy people's stuff, but to destroy the doctrine that's out there. Right? How are we going to do that? We got to be the salt of the earth. We got to know, we're going to realize what this salt is, system, brother. Go ahead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. What is holy? You are set apart, people. You set apart for the use of God, uh, of God's purpose. Right? Go ahead. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So you are special? You know, special. They, don't, they don't like special people, right? But go ahead. But God said you are special. Above what? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Uh-huh. The Lord did not set his love upon, upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. Uh-huh. For you were the fewest of all people. Man, can you believe that? God ain't looking at a multitude. He's looking, like, he's looking at people who want to do his whatever he commands us to do. Right? He's looking at where inside of your mind is. Right? In your heart. Right? That's where he looking. You finish that? Verse 8. Mm-hmm. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, mm-hmm. that the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. This, the- ain't no, this, this love that God had for this ain't no any, any ordinary love system, brother. This is real love. Right? That's right. Finish it. No. Nope. From the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, Uh the faithful God, which keep the covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. But one thing with God, man, he, he got you. Got to keep his covenant. You got to. Right. You finish that. Not yet. It almost at the end. Go ahead. And mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Mm. So basically, he's telling you to your end of your life, you got to keep his. His covenant. And what is his covenant system, brother? His law, right? All that God commands you to do. And he even commands you to go out into the world, right? Yes, sir. And teach those people, those nations, right? We're going to see that in this lesson. Uh, Exodus 19, we're going to read it again because Peter saw that, you know. Peter was reading these books. All right, Exodus 19. Exodus 19 and verse 1 to 8. I'm here to kickstart you you guys here today. (laughs) I'm here to provoke you today, right? All right, go ahead, read on. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Mm-hmm. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and their Israel camped before the mount. Mm-hmm. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, mm-hmm. Thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. So now, you, you see the Lord always reminds us about this. Everywhere you read in, 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 in this book, he talked about he brought you out of the land of Egypt. 
He brought you out of the land of Egypt. He keep reminding us what he did for us. So what are we going to do for him, right? Go ahead. Verse 5. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then shall you be a peculiar treasure unto me. Then, then you're going to be a peculiar people. Right? Go ahead. A peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Mm -hmm. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. A what? A kingdom of priests. What do a priest do? He's supposed to teach. Right? So all of us here, from the little one, all here, you are chosen generation. You are a, a royal priest to God. But if you, if you lost your flavor or, the, or, or, or your saltiness, what use are you? Go ahead. And in the holy nation, mm -hmm. these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. These are guaranteed words, sister and brother. Guarantee. God chosen you to be a holy nation above all nations. That's guaranteed. Do God lie? No. All right. You guys said it. <laughs> Let's go to Deuteronomy. We finish that? No. I right, finish seven. it. Verse 7, mm -hmm. and Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all, the, all these words which the Lord commanded him. Mm -hmm. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord hath spoken, we will do. Mm -hmm. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. That's right. So today, all these words, would you do it? That's, that's going to be the question today. You know, are you going to stay in the covenant in the bond of the covenant that God has given you. Are you going to stay in that? Are you going to continue, sister and brother, till the end? Because God, these, these, your, your four parents, they agree. And we believe that we came out of those lineage, right? Yeah. So this covenant is made with you too. Let's go to Deuteronomy. 27. You know, we got to be serious about this word, man. I've been in this thing too long. I have seen so much things, right? But I stay firm. I hold on to what I got. What you going to do, sister and brother? Are hold you going to hold on? Hold on. I'm going to hold on till the end. You know, listen, I just got a few days on this, on this earth. That's all we got. What else do you have? Man. You have a mansion on a hill. When you die, that mansion going to stay right there, and you're going to be right there. That million dollar going to be in the bank, Somebody and you're going to be in the six, six feet, right? Yes, sir. Is, that, is that so? Am I lying? No. That's the truth. Right? Listen, things are getting harder and harder. What are we going to do, sister and brother? We got to hold on to this word. What else? It's just going to get more complicated out here in this world. It's not going to get easier. We're going to see this today. All right? I'm here to put a fire on the, all, of, all of us here today. And I hope you don't out this fire. Don't you? Then, then the priest them had that. They had that fire burning. The Lord told them, "Don't let that fire go out." Yes, sir. That's that fire I'm bringing today, sister and brother. I hope this fire that I'm giving you today that it don't go out. All right, um, twenty-seven, and pick it up at verse nine. Go ahead. And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, mm -hmm. Take heed and hearken, O Israel. This day art thou become the people of the Lord thy God. Today, right? Go ahead. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's, let's, uh, let's go to Isaiah 49. 
Isaiah 49. Because we want to know who is talking throughout this whole book. Who is the one that met us on, on Mount Sinai? Jesus. Who is the one who gave us this covenant? The Lord preserve his word, sister and brother. This word is here. For, he said his word will not come back void, right? Right. So that's why we have this word today. That's why we can come in this book and know exactly what this book is saying about us. It was not given to no other nation. Did we read that? No. We're going to read it. Forty-nine and verse five. Go ahead, pick it up. And now said the Lord that formed me from the womb to mm -hmm. be his servant to bring Jacob again to him. Mm -hmm. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord mm -hmm. and my God. This is the Father, right? He's talking to the Son, right? Go ahead. Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord and my God shall be my strength. Mm -hmm. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that they may be my salvation until the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. So let's go to um, well, let me see Matthew because like you're supposed to bring this word throughout the whole entire world. Let's see what Jesus said. He's reforming what he said there in Isaiah. Let's um, read it real quick. What your duty are. You being the salt of the earth, what you're supposed to do. We're going to read, uh, we're going to read it two verses there. I know there's, there's, I only put one, but go ahead, read it. Matthew 28 and verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, uh -huh. baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. That's right. That's right. The Lord command you to go out there and teach this word. Because you are the priest. You are the priest of the most high God. Do you understand that? Let's go back to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. But if you're going to teach all nations, don't you supposed to know some book? Yes, sir. That's why you got to come here on the Sabbath day to get this word in you. You remember um, Eli Elijah's, Elijah, what was Elijah? The one that um, took over after Elijah? Elisha. Elisha. You remember when Elisha, when he died, right, and his bone was on, on, the, on, the, on, on, the, on, on the ground, right? And then some, someone else died. And what happened? That person, they, they let him down and, and his body touched that bone. And guess what? That person came back alive. What do you think that is? That's that word, that living word. That so richly that was in Elisha's. And I hope this word will dwell in you richly so that, that, that can happen also, right? That's how we're going to go out there and heal people and do all these things. But you got to get this word in you, this living word. You got to get it in you. Read, read um, verse 1 to 10. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, but to do them that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Mm -hmm. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish out from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Ain't that what the nation's doing out there? They're adding to this word? What do Islam do? They say, no, nah, this book is no more good. Um, no, nah, here is the Quran. It replaced this book. You know? And they're adding, they're adding to the word. I say, um, it's, it's, um, it's Allah, that Jehovah is, is Allah, 
the God of Israel? Or is he the God of uh, Saudi Arabia? Or, or, or these different countries, right? Is he? They add into the word. Right? Go ahead. Verse 3. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. Mm -hmm. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God. Baal Peor is, is a God that Israel, or the Egyptians, is a God that you sacrifice your little children to. You got that happening today in, in the uh, music world. When, when um, you, your children are missing or something, guess what? They over there sacrificing your child. Right? They're giving it to, the, to those gods. Read on. The Lord thy God have destroyed them from among you. Mm -hmm. But you that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land where you go as to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, we shall hear all the statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them mm -hmm. as the Lord our God is in all the things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all, the, all this law which I set before you this day? They, they ain't got no, no other nation like that. You know, you go to... Um well, I think it's Vietnam. You know, if you break a law over there, they cut all your, your, your cut. Each time you steal something, they cut your finger off. Two, three fingers. And then the next thing, they get to your toes. Every time you do something bad, they cut. That's what they do over in those, those people. They, those laws, you know, it's not according to this law that's in this book. They all, they're adding to the law of God. They don't have the wisdom that God gave us as a nation. Right? Go ahead. Verse 9. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, mm -hmm. and lest they depart from, from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. That's, on, that's the only way this word, gonna, we're going to preserve this word. If we keep teaching it to our generation to generation, right? Right? Right. Is finished, you finished there? Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Keep on. Verse 10. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. That's right. Let's go to um, Psalms. Psalms 147. Yeah, it's over and over the Lord is saying, I know you. You're the only one I have given these. I have made a covenant with you and given you my statutes, my judgment, and everything. And you're supposed to go out there and preserve the whole world. We're going to see if Israel can, uh, is really doing that. Oh, they are they shaking it. Oh, they are they shaking it, right? <laughs> what they're really doing, what Israel is doing. All right, Psalms. Go ahead, read it when you get there, my brother. Psalms 147, verse mm -hmm. 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Mm -hmm. He have not dealt so with any nation. What? He has not dealt so with any nation. You think people believe that when, when you read that to them? They be like, no, Jesus come to me too. Yeah. He come to you too, but it's a, it's a, protoc it's a protocol. It's a way to do stuff. Right? And the pro you got to go through Israel to be in the to be in the household of God, right? Will you finish that? No, in the middle. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Mm-hmm. Let's go to um, Romans the ninth chapter because 
It's a big job you got, Israel. And I hope you know that. Because you ain't going to just walk into the kingdom when God give you this job to do as a nation. Too much is given. What? Answer me. <laughs> much is given. Much is, <laughs> much is required, right? Right. So you, you are given a lot, Israel. You, you are a priest to all nations. Do you understand? You know what I mean? All right. Go ahead and read that. Romans 9, verse 1. Five. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. Mm -hmm. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself was accursed for Christ, for my brethren. Look at my this. Paul, he, Paul even uh, loved us so much, right? He wanted to be a curse for the whole nation, man. Could you imagine that? That's what Jesus ended up being. A so. curse for the whole entire world. And Israel, right? right? Go ahead, read. My kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving you of the You was adopted, law. Israel. You was adopted. He adopted you when he brought you out of the land of Egypt. But what he adopted you for? Right? Go ahead. And the giving of the law and the service of God. The, and the service? Promises. We're supposed to administer the service of God? Yes, we do. Go ahead. Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So you got a big job. You got you to gotta teach the people the law. And you got to conduct the service, and you got to you got to show them all the promises of God. You got to show them all the heathen, all the nation. We just read that earlier. Let's uh, Romans, the third chapter. Back to um, Romans, the third chapter, and we're gonna pick it up at verse one. Let's see, what, let's see what Paul is saying here. And remember, Paul is reading the Old Testament. And he wrote this, right? Because he understands what's going on. He understands his mission. Do we understand our mission? Go ahead. What advantage then have the Jew? Mm -hmm. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Mm -hmm. Much every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. We have all the answers. And how do we have the answers? We have to read the book. We have to read the book and show the other nations that we have the answers. They, they're talking about they're going to heaven. Do you have the answer for that? Yes. You should. Right? Yes. You born again. All of that stuff. You have the answer, right, Israel? Right. When, when they're talking about the Trinity, yeah, three and one, don't you have the answer for that, Israel? Yes. You should. You should. Where we at? Verse three. Mm -hmm. You finish that? No. Go ahead, finish it up. What if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Mm -hmm. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sins and mightest overcome when thou art judged. That's right. Um, let's go to um, Matthew, the fifth chapter. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Because um, we're going to see about the salt of the earth, right? Israel. Now we know that we are chosen, and we, got, we are the salt of the earth. Jesus said it. This is a nugget. I 
All right. Uh, Matthew 5 and verse 9 to 4. Let's see what Jesus said for us being the salt of the earth. Right? Read. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, mm -hmm. for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We got to endure, system, brother. Go ahead. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Mm -hmm. that ain't, that ain't, that's the, you know, you got these um, people out there driving out there, and you should have the answer. They got that, their car, and they say, I'm blessed. Say, but do you keep the Sabbath day? How are you blessed? Right? We got the answer system, brother. Go ahead, read. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted the prophets which were before you. Mm -hmm. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? So look, your savor, that's what? That's definition. That's um, flavor. So you lost your saltiness. But look at the ocean. Do, does that, does the sea lost its salt? It preserves everything in there. The fish might die, but that salt is still there. What happened to you, Israel? Where your salt at? Right? But according to this word, that salt, you got to be salt at all time. You got to know this word at all time. Go ahead. It is thenceforth good for nothing mm -hmm. but to be cast out and be, to be trodden on the foot of men. Not cast out. Cast so if, out. if, you, if, you, if um, you don't have flavor anymore, you don't taste good anymore, you know, you, know, you, you have these little kids, you know, that you put the vegetable on their plate there and they ain't got no seasoning in it. They, they gonna, they gonna, when you gone, to, gone out somewhere, going to use the bathroom, they're going to throw that thing in the trash. <laughs> Ah, yeah, mama, that was good. It tastes real good. <laughs> you ate all of it? Yeah, I did, mama. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. So if, that, if you lost your saltiness, what you are you? We're going to see about that. Go ahead. 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Man, that's a lot of things God put on us, man. We are the light of the world. Remember, Jesus also is the light of the world. Right? Right. So he likened us unto him. But we got to, are we a reflection of him? Right? Right. Read on. That was it, 14. That was it, 14. Mm -hmm. All right. So we lost our, our, our saltiness, mm -hmm. and we're going to be cast out. We're going to see about all that, right? And sometimes when I look around, man, I want to know if we've really been cast out. Isaiah. Isaiah. Um, because who's supposed to be here going to be here? And that's the truth. Yeah, he said we're going to be cast out. Let's see if we're going to be cast out of the land of Israel. We're going to be trotted down in all of this, man. That ain't sound like something good, right? No, it's not. That sound like, it sound like a, a, a reggae song or something? Nah, no, it don't sound no. good. It don't sound good. <laughs> Let's go to um, Isaiah, the second chapter, and pick it up at verse 2. Let's hear the music here, man. Verse 2 or verse 1? I mean, Isaiah um, chapter 1 and verse 2. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 2. Let's hear this music, man. You know, if it sounds real good. Let's play this record, bro. Go ahead, read it. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Not rebelled. Rebelled. Go ahead. The ox north is owner. And the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know, my people do not consider. Mm -hmm. Unsend for nation, a people laden with iniquity, mm -hmm. 
a seed of evildoers, children that are corrupt. That's what we become? That's what we become. Go ahead. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. Mm -hmm. They are going away backward. We're going to see what the Lord is going to say about that. We forsake him. And what he do when he angry. We're going to see all, of it, all that today. Go ahead. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. Mm -hmm. The whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and purifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Mm, what is the ointment? The word of God. That's right. The word of God. The Bible says let, let us lock no ointment, right? No oil or all of that, right? Go ahead. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And, and don't we see that? Yep. Right now, what's going on in Israel? Fight. They're fighting. And none of them know who the land belongs to. And we're looking at it, looking at it. And we're down there going out there protesting and all this stuff, man. We don't know the history. Right? What about you? When you were when you were slavery, did they come and protest? Huh? Talk to me now. Did they say come back? Huh? Talk to me now. Israel, what's wrong? Didn't the book say we are sick? All right. You know, you know the um, the the is the um, Israel. I mean, um, Muslim and Israel, the Palestinian and all those people over there. They, they don't like you. They don't like you, you know. But you going to jail for them? You protested. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I think you go go live in Israel and see what will happen to you. Go live in Israel and see what will happen to you. He said, man, I'm going to jail for you, man. I love you. Go live in Palestine and see what will happen to you. Huh? We finished that? No, at the end of seven. Go ahead. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left. And they are strangers, right? Yep. Go ahead. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage and a vineyard as a lodge and a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Mm -hmm. Except the Lord of hosts have left unto us a very small remnant, mm -hmm. which should have been as And Sodom. that's what we're looking at, a small remnant here. Right, but it's okay. Because God is looking in the heart. He's looking in his mind. If you're going to do what he say, are you going to continue? Or are you just going to be half-stepping? What you doing? Right? Are you going to be hot? Or cold. Or are you going to be cold? Choose you which one you're going to be for the Lord. Not for me. For the Lord. The God you say you love. Right? Go ahead. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Hear the word of the Lord. But, but it's because the Lord loves us so much. That's why he's keeping a remnant. Right? Because God is a... a um, he made promises, and he going to keep his. He ain't going to falter on his promise. Right? Go ahead. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, he's talking about our attitude, right? Let's go to... Um, Let's go to um, First King, the tenth chapter. Let's look at something here, man. We're supposed to be teaching all nations, and this is how it's supposed to be. All nations should love us when we have the wisdom that God gave us, the understanding that God gave us. This is what's going to happen if you have all of that. Because what did the Lord give Solomon? Wisdom. Wisdom, right? And understanding. He was able to judge right, righteously, and then he faltered, right? 
because his flesh, you know, got in the way. Lust and all that stuff. But he had everything. We're going to read it. Go ahead. Um, First King, the 10th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And we're going to do some skipping. Verse 1 to 10. Go ahead. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. What, the queen, the queen of Ethiopia? The queen of Sheba. The queen of Sheba. Right? So do your little research and find out where she was residing at. Right? And it sure ain't no Ethiopia, for sure, sure. And that story that with Malalek, that story ain't true. Right? With Hill Selassie and them, that story ain't true. Right? She got a son by Solomon, and is, is um, um, <coughs> uh, you know, I just mentioned the name, but go ahead, read on. Verse 2. And she came to Jerusalem with a great train with camels that mm. bear spices mm -hmm. and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all. Wait a minute, she communed? What do commune mean? Talk. Talking, right? Conversation. You know, people have you think otherwise. They were doing something different, you know what I mean? If you go hang out with these Rastafarian, they'll tell you, yeah, man, that was not that, what you think, that communion. Communi nah, they weren't communing. They were doing something different. That's why Melelech is the son. That's not true. That's all added doctrine to the word of God. And what he said, don't add to it. Take away. And don't take away. I had a Rastafarian read this, man. He said, man, nah, man. Nah, that book is, uh, you know, that book is temporary, you know. That's not what my book say. You see, they're going to add doctrine to God's word. But they walk around with this here, too. And their little added version. Right? Go ahead. She communed with him all that was in her heart. Mm -hmm. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. So she came to ask hard questions, right? Go ahead. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all of Solomon's wisdom mm -hmm. and the house that he had built and the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel and his cupbearers and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. At this time, we are the salt of the earth. Because people coming around, they, they heard the wisdom. Because at this time, there was wise. Like we read in um, Deuteronomy, the, the fourth chapter. We're supposed to be a wise nation. Right? And then people going to come and flock to us. Yeah, we got to be careful how we carry ourselves because... People, that can deter people too, the way we carry ourselves. Right? We got to be careful of that too. Go ahead. And she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. <coughs> mm -hmm. Howbeit, I believed not the words until I came, and my eyes have seen it, and behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I have heard, mm -hmm. which I heard. Happy are thy men, happy are thy servants which stand continually before thee, and they hear thy wisdom. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee to sit thee on the throne of Israel, mm -hmm. because the Lord and loved... And that's how they're going to inquire about your God, the God you serve. Because the way you carry yourself and the things you do and the wisdom you, you obtain. Right? You know, man, this man know the book. They always said that about, about me. You know, I walk around, they say, man, that boy there, he know the book. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, man. Yeah, I study, you know. I, I do a lot of studying. That's why I know the book. Because it was um, a gentleman at my job. He's, he's like, man, I heard you know the book. I said, yeah. I, um, I have a question for you. I got a question. I said, oh, go ahead with your question, man. Yeah, um. He was confused about um, Melchizedek. He, he didn't know the name, so I said, I kind of perceived out what he was getting because he, he was talking about Abraham. And I was like, what, 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 what do, um, he's like, I don't know the name, but um, 
He said, my friends say that Melchizedek is Jesus. No, he, he didn't call the name Melchizedek. I had to give him the name Mel Melchizedek. So I was like, um, yeah, man, Melchizedek is Jesus. And then he called his other brethren that told him that Melchizedek is Jesus. And he, he started to talk to me. And, I, and he started to, uh, he said, um, his family, they are a professor in the word of God. And I could, I could see that. I could see that because when I, when I asked him questions, and he asked me questions. We all line up in the book. So I know that brother know his book. You know? And he was like, he took me to, um, he took me to uh, what, uh, Hebrews. He took me all over. He took me to, to John, the first chapter. The dude took me, I didn't, I was like, this dude really know his word, man. And I, I, I give him the website. I said, man, check us out, man. Check us out, bro. But yeah. You got to know this word to guide people. And the other dude that was, you know, he said the, the, the question that his friend told him was bothering him. So he saw me, and he's like, man, you know, I don't know, something about you, you can, you, I think you can answer this question, man. I, this thing will bother me for a long time. And if you answer this question, I'm going to come to your church. I said, man, you word on that? You word on that? Word up. I said, well, don't back out now. <laughs> yeah, I know. So he said he's going to come, man, so I don't know. But he worked on Saturday. I said, pray that the Lord um, relieve you from that, you know. Yeah, but um, Job, he wants to come. He, he don't live too far from the church. Um, did we finish that? No, I'm in the middle. Yeah, read on. Because the Lord loved Israel forever, mm. therefore made he forever? the Forever? Man, that's a. Mm, that's a marriage right there. You go through a lot with this marriage. <laughs> Lord is going through a lot, man. Israel is giving God a headache. Right? Yes, go sir. ahead. Therefore made he the king to do judgment and justice. Mm -hmm. And she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold and of spices, very great store and precious stones, there came no such more abundance of spices as these which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. You know this still going to happen? It's going to happen, sister and brother. They're going to bring all this, this gold and everything to you. You fighting to get things right now? But God, all he wants you to get this word, man. He wants you to preserve the other nation. That's your duty. You got a job to do. And then he's going to reward you. But we want our reward right here, right now and then. Right here today. Right? What we want? You know, we want fancy car, fancy house. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that, though. You know? But you're going to get more than that if you do what does say the Lord. Lord. Imagine, we got to live forever where to be in the God's kingdom. All right, let's go fire. We're going to live forever. Believe it. We finish that? Yeah, we need to skip down to 23. Go ahead. Go ahead, 23. Skip down to 23. Yes. Verse 23. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. Mm -hmm. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. That's right. So that's what's going to happen to us if we continue this word. Right? Um. But let's go to Job. Let's go to Job, the sixth chapter. Because uh, Jesus said something, man, and really bothered me up to this day, you know. He said, we are the salt of the earth, man. I mean. Yeah, Job, the sixth chapter, and we're going to read two verses there. Verse 6. And verse 7. Man, even Job know about this salt, man. But let's see what Job got to say about this salt. Go ahead, read. Verse 6. 
can that which is unsavory be eaten without salt? Mm -hmm. Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? Mm. Don't the, the, um, I know I had eaten white um, egg, the egg. I didn't eat the yolk. I throw the yolk away and I try to eat the, um, the white part of the egg. And it don't taste good. It really <laughs> don't. You got to put some salt in that thing. Give that thing some flavor. Because that thing is bland. So can you eat it? It's hard. I mean, you know. And that's what the, the G Jesus said. We lost our flavor, man. Our saltiness. And what are we going to do about it? Leviticus, Leviticus, um, the second chapter and verse 8. Because, man, let's see if God, God likes salt. Because he said we are the salt of the earth. He's showing us here in Leviticus something physical to show something spiritual. Leviticus, the second chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8, and we're going to do some skipping. Verse 8, 10, and then we're going to skip to 13. Because, um, you know, due to our sin, God instituted the Leviticus priesthood and he, and we sin more and more, we keep sinning, so therefore animal sacrifice was put in place. But this is what God wants, this is how you, he wants us to do it when we sin, right? We don't do the animal anymore, we don't sacrifice animal anymore. You're hearing me. Yeah. All right, go ahead and read it, verse 8. And thou shalt bring the meat offering that is made of these things unto the Lord. And when it is presented unto the priest, he shall bring it unto the altar. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall take from the meat offering a memorial thereof and shall burn it upon the altar. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Mm. Savor, and, right? Flavor. Smelling good, right? Um, you finish that? Verse 10. Skip down to 13. I didn't read 10. You know. Oh, you didn't read 10. All right, go ahead. Verse 10, and that which is left of the meat offering shall be Aaron and his sons, and is the thing most holy of the offering of the Lord made by fire. Man, I got to be, Aaron had to be a big brother, man. He had to be a real big brother. Because I'm telling you, man, all that, all that sin that Israel do, <laughs> man, that's a lot of meat in that house of the Lord, right? <laughs> man. Go ahead, um, skip down to um, verse 13, go ahead. And every oblation of thy meat offering shall thou season with salt. Mm -hmm. Neither shall thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from the meat offering. So he don't want that salt to be lacking. You got to put that salt on there. He want to be all part of that, that, that meat, right? He wanted that whole meat to be flavored, seasoned well. He don't want it to be lacking. And it's the same thing. He wants you to be seasoned, and you shouldn't lack. You got to be seasoned well. We're going to see this. You finish it up? This, with all thine offering, thou shalt offer salt. With everything you do, with all your might, he wants you to have that flavor when you go out there to, to teach this word. Right? Let's go to Mark. Mark the ninth chapter. He gonna remind us. Yeah. Mark the ninth chapter. Uh, 
And we're going to pick it up at 47. We're going to read to 50, right? Right. That's right? That's right. Okay. Read it when you get there, my brother. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. Mm -hmm. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Mm, basically, he's telling you stop that sinning that you are doing. Quit. Stop today. Right? Go ahead. For the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Mm -hmm. For everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Mm, then we read that. Go ahead. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its saltness, mm. for wit will you season it. Mm -hmm. Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Have this word in you, sister and brother. And that's what's going to bring about peace. If you got this word in you, because you're going to know thou shall not, thou shall not, and all this is. Somebody offend you. You know how to act. You know what to do. Because you got this word in you. This word is going to help you prevent any evil that comes against you. This word will be able to guide you. But you got to get it in you. That, that, that salt got to be all over your body. Inside and out. I ain't bring no salt today, but I brought the word. <laughs> All right. And I think that's sufficient. All right. Let's go to Amos. Amos, the third chapter. See once more before we get into all oh, this here, man. The Lord keep reminding us He has chosen us above all nations. Let's read it one more time. Because He keep telling us all over this Bible. So if they take away one of the books, you got it in another book. <laughs> right? Right. You can find it in another book. You, you know, they will have to do a lot of reading, right, to come here and take this one out. They're going to have to do a lot of reading because it's all over the book. And the next thing, if they keep taking it all out, they're going to take the, there ain't going to be no more book. You know what I mean? But they, they can't do that. Go ahead, because that's going to cut out their money, right? Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, Man, saying, he keep reminding us about this Egypt thing. Man, it seems like he don't, the God don't forget that. I believe when he returns, he's going to say the same thing. <laughs> I brought you out of the land of Egypt. <laughs> right? Go ahead. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Punish? Punish. Man, do we deserve that? Yes. Iniquity, sins, right? Sin. Let's go and see because Daniel, he's getting a headache about all this here. Let's go see what Daniel's headache is. You're going to do it. Huh? Let's get Isaiah. Yeah, huh? We got to read Isaiah. Who is that? Isaiah 43. Oh, Isaiah 43. I'm sorry. Isaiah 43, I'm good there. Isaiah 43. Because he might say it, he said it in all different type of way. You're the salt of the earth. I have chosen you above all nations. He's saying, now, let's see what he's saying in Isaiah 43 here. Isaiah 43. He's telling you in a different way. Because maybe you don't understand one way. He's going to say it a different way. Isaiah 43, verse 10. What did he say, my brother? Ye are my witnesses, said the Lord. Wait a minute. 
Weaknesses. Witnesses. Weaknesses, right? Okay, let's, let's hear more about that. Go ahead. And my servant whom I have chosen. Mm, chosen. Go ahead. That you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. So he chose you because you are the true what? Jehovah Witnesses. Witness. Right? Are you not? Yes. Or you want them, all them, them Sunday people to be the Jehovah Witnesses? Because they, they, it seems like they don't, they're working hard out there, but they don't have the doctrine. They don't have the truth. You got the truth. And you, the, you, God chose you for real. We're reading this all day. And you're the Jehovah Witnesses. You're supposed to be knocking on doors, right? You, yeah, you're supposed to beat them. Wait a minute, he going over there? Let me bypass him real quick, man. I'm going over there. I got to bring that word to him before he do. Because what he bring is, is damnable heresy. Right? You know the word. You got the answer, Israel. Did we read that? Yes. Read on. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that, right? Uh, Muhammad ain't your Savior, right? Because they tell you uh, if you don't say Muhammad's name, you, you in, um, you're not Islam, you're not a Muslim, if you don't acknowledge him. I'm like, what? Is that so? But yeah, because they don't, they, have, they don't have the right doctrine. They add into God's word. Read on. Verse 12. I have declared and have saved. I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you are my witnesses, said the Lord, that I am God. Mm -hmm. Then he said, you are peculiar people. He put you aside and tell you that. You are my priests. He telling you all sorts of ways. This is in my in my book is read. I don't know your book, but you can hear it and understand what it's saying, regardless if it's black in your book. Right? Go ahead. Yea, before the day was, I am He. Mm -hmm. and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Mm -hmm. What was written is that? Oh, let me see. Is it the ten? 13, you finished 13, right? I just right? finished 13. Uh, skip down to 21, 21 to 28. Go ahead. This people have I formed for myself. Mm -hmm. Then he formed you in the wilderness system, brother? Yeah, go ahead. They shall show forth my praise. You, Man, he said you shall show, but we're not doing that. That's the problem. God have a problem with us now. Go ahead. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. Mm-hmm. But thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. We weary of the Lord? We tired hearing God's word? We tired calling upon his name? Should we be tired calling upon God's name? No. We only call when we need something? Yep. When we need a Bentley or something? <laughs> we call on the Lord? Huh? You know, we wait till we get real, real sick, then we call upon the Lord. Is that the way it's supposed to be? No. That's why sometimes we don't get healed, right? Because we ain't calling upon the Lord all, every day. Right? Go ahead. 23. There has not bought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Neither has thou honored me with thy sacrifices. Mm -hmm. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor weary thee with incense. Mm -hmm. He weary you with that. That was added because of transgression. That was, this is a schoolmaster. That was a schoolmaster bring us to Christ. Right? Go ahead. Thou has bought me no sweet cane with money. Mm -hmm. Neither has thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, but thou has made me to serve with thy sins. Mm -hmm. Thou has wearied me with thine iniquities. Mm -hmm. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. Yeah, he did that. He did that for us. It's not, 
You know, because God had made a covenant with Abraham and Isaac. Right? So God going to do what he going to do. Yeah. He died for us. He blotted out. But you got to come under his blood. You got to come under that covenant. Right? And you got to continue in that covenant. You can't have step. Because he done died for you. Right? Because he tired of these animal sacrifices. I, I could, a man, lucky thing I didn't want to live in those days, man, I would have been fat too. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, all that meat I had to consume. Go ahead. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. The first father have sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I have profaned the princes of thy sanctuary. The princes of the sanctuary? Those, those are the priests. Right? Read on. And have given Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproaches. We're going to see about these curses now. Because we sure do got them things. When, they, when you uh, move into a neighborhood, what happened? They move out. Because, I, man, I remember when I first moved in Stone Mountain, man, you know, in Georgia. It was, it, my neighbor, you know. Next thing I know, two morning, I see the sales, sales signs, bro. You know. It, am, am I cursed or something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, the whole, the, you know, the whole neighborhood is done changed. And we don't even know the reason why it keep happening like that. Because we're trying to live somewhere good, right? We're trying to grow our kids up in, some, in a good community, right? Right. We're trying to find, hey, man, this community look good, man. Huh? Everything, no, ain't, ain't nobody running out with their pants hanging down, none of that stuff in this neighborhood. Eh? <laughs> That's what you want to bring your kids, right? Right. But guess what? After a while, they move out. Right? So we got to be careful how we, go, we call ourselves Israel, right? The right. salt of the earth. So we got to be careful how we carry ourselves. How we grow them children. Right? Right. Where we at, brother? Um, Isaiah, where we didn't finish? Isaiah. Yes, we finished that? Finished it. All right. Let's go to Daniel. Because um, Daniel is getting a headache about this stuff, man. You know what I mean? We're going we to hear. Because Daniel done pick up some of these books, man. Jeremiah and them books, right? Right. Pick up the law. He reading the law and all this, and what we supposed to do and all this, and man. This thing giving our brother a headache. And I hope we getting a headache. You know? Pick it up at um, verse 11. Um, Daniel 9. Verse 11 to 14. Y'all keep me straight because I'm talking too much. <laughs> Y'all keep me straight, please. All right. I hear some pages turning. But because I, I want all y'all to see what Daniel's headache is. You know, Daniel in captivity at this point. You know? And you want to know what, what's going on, man? What's what, what happening? Let me inquire from the Lord, right? But he, he, he noticed one thing. Let's go uh, read verse 11. Go ahead. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, mm -hmm. even by departing, that they may not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Not the curse. The curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Mm -hmm. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us. By We're going to see how he uh, uh, um, confirm his word. We're going to read that. We're going to go back deep in the law and see what, what, um, what um, he's talking about. The oath. Right? Go ahead. By bringing upon us a great evil. Mm -hmm. For under the whole heaven have not been done as has been done unto Jerusalem. And that's, it been done so good, sister and brother. It ain't, it ain't happened to no other nation. And... Ain't a, ain't, a, ain't a nation in this earth could have done what has been done to us. It's the Lord that brought this upon us. It's been done so perfectly. 
Right? Go ahead. As it is written in the law of Moses, mm -hmm. all this evil is to come upon us, yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God mm -hmm. that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Mm -hmm. Therefore has the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. And because the God is righteous, you know, he say what he going to do if we turn from him. He say what he going to do because he's a righteous God. And what he did, we deserve it, don't we? Yes, we do. We're going to see about this here if we really deserve it. Um, Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26. I read this Leviticus 26, man. I say, you know, you know what? I said, man, when you pick up this book, man, you can't stop reading, man. I was like, man, you'll read till you fall asleep and wake up back and read a little bit more. Right? But you know what? For all these years, I still continue to read this word. You know? It's never enough. You will forget most, most of the things you have learned. And you'll remember some if you pick up this book back and read it. You know what I mean? You got to continue reading this book. It seems like, you know, my cup is not always full. But it ought to be. But it seems like, you know, he gives you just enough. And you, you got to keep pouring in that cup till it starts begin to run over. And that's why we're going to read this whole chapter. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you shall make no idols nor graven image, uh -huh. neither rear up a standing image, neither shall you set up an image of stone in your land. Uh -huh. And that's what we're doing, right? We're going to some of these churches. You know, you got this graven image in the church. I mean, come on now. You read this Bible. You say you, you read this Bible, and you got a graven image in the church. You calling him Jesus, and you calling this one Mary. God said he don't want that stuff. And you can't tell nobody nothing. You know? Go ahead. To bow down unto it. To bow down? To bow down unto it. He don't want you to bow down to it. But this is what he wants. Go ahead. For I am the Lord your God. Uh-huh. You shall keep my Sabbaths. And keep the Sabbaths, right? Sabbaths. Right. And reference my sanctuary. And reference my sanctuary. I am the Lord. take care of this place here, right? This has been given to you by God. This is your place. You got to reference this place, sister and brother. You know? This is where we come together. You know, we don't see each other when we part our way going out of here. When we come back together, we're supposed to reference the sanctuary system, brother. Right? I mean, this is really, truly what we come. And when we got here today, we're keeping the Sabbath real. Because that's keeping you from going. If you're at the house, you might think about going to Amazon, right? <laughs> you might buy something real quick. Next thing, the man delivering something. You, your neighbor looking at you, though, you're like, what? You delivering stuff on Saturday? Well, she been buying stuff over there, right? You been killing that internet. Or that brother, you killing that internet, right? He buying the toys and whatnot. But yeah, man, this is where we keep it real right here when you come here on the Sabbath day. Because for sure, sure, we can't keep it real at the house. You know, it's a lot of things happen when you're home. So that's why he's here. That's why God wants you to come together, right? right. Read on. Because I, I, this chapter is long, so I, I, I'll let you read. Bro. <laughs> I, I am the Lord. Uh huh. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, uh -huh. then will I give you rain in due season, and the land sh shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And, and some of us, you know, we'll see we, we doing a little, you know, we're doing a little better than each other, you know. We're doing that because we're keeping, that, we're keeping the commandments of the Lord. And we're able to help others. Right? 
because the Lord bless you. You're able to go out there and feed the poor and do all that, right? Because the Lord don't give you a little, you know, get a little something in the, in the pocket, right? Go ahead. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and mm -hmm. the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And you shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. Mm -hmm. And I will give you peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And you know God keep his covenant. You're going to see, in, um, again the Lord said when he come back, it's going to be peace on earth. Right. So who's going to come against you? Nobody. And even if they try, the Lord going to get on them, right? Go ahead. And you shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. Mm -hmm. And five of you shall chase a an hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. Mm -hmm. That's why with numbers, it don't matter to God. Numbers don't matter. That's why he chose you, sister and brother, because numbers don't matter. You know, you got other nations larger than you. You go to India. Man, they're about, I don't know how many million they, they, uh, I'm for that. I think they're close to one one. Nine, 900 million or something, you know, in India. But he chose you, sister and brother. Look at uh, uh, the land of Israel. Look how small that is, and he chose you. Right, go ahead. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Mm -hmm. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you. Now respect. Respect. Go and ahead. Make, and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. And you shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. Mm -hmm. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall He's not... still going to do that, sister and brother. When he come back, he going to set that, that tabernacle right there in the midst of you, sister and brother. That way you can come and see him and pray before him. Right? You're going to see God so much. And we ain't seeing God right now, right? But when he comes back, we're going to see him every day. Right? For a thousand years at least, we can read this in this book, right? And you ain't going to get weary because that's going to give you more energy, right? Go ahead, read on. And my soul shall not abhor you, and I will walk among you and be your God, and you shall be my people. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord your God, which brought you, you forth. You still going to be his people. You still. You know? Go ahead which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their bondmen, and I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. Mm -hmm. But if you will not hearken unto me... Wait a minute now. If. There's an if in there, and that changed the dy dynamics, right? That if. Go ahead. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments... And if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments. Man, don't they despise these laws? They said, um, the Sabbath day, what is that? God done away with all those laws, brother. All you need is Jesus. That's what they tell you, right? Go ahead. So that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant. I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague that should consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Mm. And I will set my face... And that what happened, man. You remember uh, Jamaica, right? Jamaica was the sugar cane um, producer, right? You produce all that sugar cane, and you don't get nothing much. You plant all that banana, and you don't get nothing much. Get what? They're selling it over there in Europe somewhere, right? Yeah, and it happened today, too. Because we plant the banana, we rather sell that banana, and we just take a little bit. But we sell most of it off, right? They're still taking it. Whether they use money, they're still taking it away from you. Go ahead. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. Mm -hmm. They that hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when then God I, pursue then, you. Then, then I told you they hate you? But you said, man, they love me, man. I'm a protest for them. I'm Palestinian and all them, boy. Israel, I, I'm going to be either be on one. I'm going to choose one side. I'm going to be on Israel. I'm going to be 
uh, the, uh, Palestinian or, you know. But they, the book said they hate you. Them nations hate you, man. Do you know that? Go ahead. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. What? Seven times? Man. Oh, how come Trump ain't lock up yet? All them things he did. Right? We have documentation. But that brother's still walking around. If that was you, Israel, what would happen to you? Prison. You'd be done gone the first, the first day you saw that courtroom. The courtroom, right? He would drop the hammer on you, right? You get 70 years. Yeah. Well, yeah, sister and brother, go ahead. And Read I on. Will, and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. Mm, and otherwise, he going to make it hard for you, sis, sister and brother. Man, I see some of, the, some of these homeless people on the road, man. The, I could feel it. I was like, man, the Lord has made it hard for us, man. As a nation, we get mental sickness. We get all kind of things happening. The Lord is causing this upon us because we're not calling upon him. Ain't he say he's your uh, healer? He's your counselor? Didn't the Lord say that? Am no. I lying? No. Didn't he say he sent this word to heal you? You know, I noticed uh, uh, from all, you know, I've been living in the United States. I've been in this church almost 20, 23 years. And, you know, I had my cousin and them were living. You know, they were, come, they were in the church, my uh, nephews and all of them. But they left the word. And now I'm looking at them. I said, what happened to these people? They, you seem like they lost their mind, sister and brother. You won't believe it. You look at them, it's like, wow. They left this word, man. And their mind is not together. Wow. It's just amazing. I look at them and I was like, man, I hope they find their way. Because when the Lord turns his back on you, I don't know, man. God have mercy, right? All right. We on. Verse 20, mm -hmm. and, your, and your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of thy land yield their fruits. And if you walk contrary unto me, mm -hmm. and without hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. Man, seven times more? He said first, first seven times, then he said seven times more. Man, the Lord don't play, man. That's why we're in this condition. And we still don't, this church should have been packed today. But because of, you know, because of our iniquity, our hardness of heart, you know, and our zealousness, but not according to knowledge. That's what's causing these issues. Right? Read on. I will also send wild beasts among you which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you fewer in number, and your highway shall be desolate. Mm -hmm. And if you will not reform by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you mm -hmm. and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. Ooh, he keeps saying that, man. That's why I wanted to read this whole thing. You know what I mean? Go ahead. And I will bring a sword upon you, that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. Mm, the what? You, the, the quarrel. The quarrel, right? Go ahead. Of my covenant, and when you are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered into the land of your enemy. Mm -hmm. When I have broken Sometimes the Sometimes you wonder why these hurricanes and all these things come in, tornado, man, and uproot you, huh? Because the Lord is so vexed. Read on. When what I verse have, you on? Verse 26. Uh -huh. When I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall break you bread in one oven, mm. and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight. You shall eat. But that, 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 um, you get ten women, bro, you're going you to be hungry because you can't provide for these ten women. This is not something good, sister brother, because brother will take this and think it's something good. It's not. 
You got to take care of 10 women and, 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 and all them 10 women, they got children. You in trouble, bro. You in Solomon and them, they, they got money. People were bringing them money. They were bringing them stuff. Who is bringing you some? You got to go work for it, bro. You're in the wrong country, bro. Wrong country. Go ahead. And you shall eat and not be satisfied. Uh-huh, and that's all it is today. And if you will not, for all this, hearken unto me, mm -hmm. but walk contrary unto me, then will I walk contrary unto you in fury, and I will even, I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. Mm -hmm. And you shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters uh -uh, shall be eaten. Don't do that now. But it happened. It happened. Then um, I, 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 the story that I read years ago, um, the woman was, you know, she said, um, let's, uh, they both were hungry, and, it's, and she said, um, let me eat your child today, and you eat mine tomorrow. And she, they, they, they agree on that, right? You all read that story, right? Yeah. And they agree. But when it come to, she did eat the, one, of the, the, one of the other, her friend's child. And then when it come to her child, she hide, hide the child. Right? Man, this happened. Man, you go into the interior, uh, some of these interior, uh, the, them indigenous people, what they do? They eat each other, man. And especially if you're a stranger, you come and, and, and uh, come in their territory. You meet for them. I think I think part of India, India, a place in India got them people. You know, some some in the Philippines and all these nations, right? Go ahead. Verse thirty. And I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. Mm -hmm. He's and still going to do that when he come back. Go ahead. And I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation, mm -hmm. and I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. Uh -huh. And I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. Mm -hmm. He's going to shake this whole herd system, brother. Go ahead. And I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your city's waste. Mm -hmm. It is. Go ahead. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths as long as it lieth desolate. Ain't them Edomites keeping Sabbath over there? Them people who call themselves Jews, just in case you don't know what I'm talking about. They over there keeping Sabbath. But they, it ain't honoring the Lord because they don't believe in Jesus. Do you realize that? They don't believe in Jesus. You tell them about Jesus and see what, see what they're going to tell you. Go ahead. And you shall be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when you dwelt upon it. Mm -hmm. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of your enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee, mm -hmm. as fleeing from a sword. That's how scary you're going to be, right? Yeah, sometimes um, look around here, we'd be scared, right? We hear a little shaking at the window, you know, I mean, it might be the breeze, but we think it's somebody coming in, right? Go ahead. And they shall fall with none pursue it. Mm -hmm. And they shall fall one upon Man, another. You go on the, um, the um, brothers, them hanging in the corner there, you know? Somebody run, guess what? Everybody. All them gone. They don't even know why they run. Hey, why are you running, bro? Why are you running? No, I don't know. I thought, I, I thought you know what's going on. <laughs> Read on. And they shall fall one upon another, and, it will, and, and as it were before, a sword when none pursue it. Uh -huh. And you shall have no power to stand before your enemies. Uh -huh. That's you right. When they, man, when they coming, man, they coming. This, this um, Gentile boy, he had a you know, police officer, man. He said, man, you should see what's in my truck, man. You, know, you don't want <laughs> you don't mess with me, man. <laughs> when they coming, they coming, bro. Go ahead. And you shall perish among the heathen, mm -hmm. and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. Uh-huh. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquities in your enemies' lands. And, 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 and that's what I see on the streets, man. You pine away. Go ahead. 
and also in the iniquities of, of their fathers shall, pass, shall they pine away with them. Mm -hmm. If they shall confess their iniquities and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they have trespassed against me, mm -hmm. and they also that have walked contrary unto me, mm -hmm. and that I also So there's have, hope for us? There's hope. But are we going to change, though? Are we going to change our own mind, though? Or are we going to turn? Go ahead. And that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of He's their He's telling enemies. you right now. This is a love letter, bro. The Lord is telling you what's, what, you know, what he agree upon. What he would do for you. And, and if you don't, he'll be against you. But this is the reason why. Go ahead. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humble, and then they accept of the punishment of their iniquity, mm -hmm. then, I, then will I remember my covenant with Wait Jacob. Wait a minute. It's about covenants? Yep. Go ahead. And also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and mm -hmm. I will remember the land. Ain't Abraham was considered righteous? Huh? Faithful Abraham? And we supposed to be the children of Abraham. We supposed to be the children of Abraham. Do we know that? Read on. The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lay up desolate without them. Mm -hmm. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despise my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes. Mm -hmm. You go on there, Sunday church, and, and, and tell them about the judgment of the Lord. You tell them the Lord gonna come back and kill him. They said, No, not sweet Jesus. No, he's he not coming back to do that. He come in to take me to heaven, right? That's what they're going to tell you. you. You ever tell you in a minute, you got the wrong Jesus. Yeah, go ahead. 44, and yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord their God. But I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors. Ancestors? I, Go ahead. You remember who, your ancestors. Whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, mm -hmm. that I might be their God, and I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel and Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Yes. Salt of the earth, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. The Lord got a number for you. Let's go to um, Deuteronomy 28. Because, uh, you know, we like to hear the blessings part. You know? Bless me, Lord. But I ain't going to do nothing you say, Lord. Bless me, Lord. That's all we want, bro. We're going to read just one to hear the blessing. But what do we got? We got the curses because of our iniquities, right? But let's read some of um, the blessing for it because, you know, that sound real good. It's a little, you know, music. Let's hear this little music. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, mm -hmm. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations Not of above earth. all nations. Go ahead. You want to skip down to 15 or keep going? Go, read verse 2. For just a, mm -hmm. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. But we didn't. We didn't. Uh, skip down to 15. Go ahead. But, if thou, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall thy be in the city, mm -hmm. and cursed shall thy be in the field. Mm -hmm. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Man, when I was uh, much younger, man, I, 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 I was like, why is it so hard for me? Why these people don't give me a break? You know, I work so hard. I, I, you know, I work the construction. And, you know, building a building, you know, a skyscraper, and it's a lot of work. Even though you build building from the next building to the next building, there's no, still no yeast. They ain't going to say, um, oh, man, you did two buildings, so you sit down and get a collector paycheck. That ain't going to happen. 
Um, the last time I checked, the dude, the dude um, we were pouring concrete. And, and, and um, I was running late because I had young kids. And I was running late, you know, I, you know, make sure the kids them all right before I go to work. But I was running late and, you know, pouring concrete. It got concrete settled and get hard real quick. So, man, you know, I'm running pipe in the, in the slab and whatnot. Um, so the, I run late. So the guy, the white guy, he did not want to do the work. He want me to be there on time to do the work. So when I came, he called me in, in my, he don't call me in my right name, bro. Why did you come late? <laughs> come down here real quick. I was like, man, who you talking to, bro? And that's when I realized, man, I didn't even read his book, but I realized something wrong with me, bro. Because um, I'm working, I'm doing all this work for you. We, we on the top deck and you complaining. I did all this work already. Huh? All right, but it still ain't enough, man. Go ahead. Verse 18. Cursed shall thou be the fruit of thy body, uh -huh. and the fruit of thy land, uh -huh. the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Mm -hmm. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall send upon and, thee. And, and, and yeah, man, your flocks them too be cursed. Because we had chickens and all them things. All them other people chicken were flourishing. And some of you chicken always sick. <laughs> What's going on with our chicken? I'm looking over there, man. Them chicken looking good over there, bro. And our chicken, they're getting all kind of fever, all kind of stuff, man. I'm like, what? Man, these people are, seems like they are blessed. Go ahead. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke. And that's what, you know, when I was living in South America, man, I, I was so vexed, man. I said, I used to have to pray to the Lord, man. I was like, Lord, get me out of this country. Get me out of here. Take me somewhere I can live good. But <laughs> I came over here, he's not good over here. <laughs> Go ahead. And all that thou settest thy hand upon for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness and, and, of and thy doings. And that's doings. what it seems like, you know. It seems like we perish quickly. Because you, you'll get a sickness in a heartbeat, you know. All this polluted food and all this stuff we're eating, right? Well, um... Where we at? Bro? At the end, uh, at the end of 20. 28. Skip down to 45. All right, bro. Them people fall asleep here, man. Come on. Wake them up. Wake them up, brother. <laughs> Put some, um, some bass in that reading, right? Yeah, go ahead. Moreover, all the curses shall be upon thee uh -huh. and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. I just wanted to look, man, and I was looking at Colombia, Colombia, uh, the South America. And I was wondering if Israel is over there. And then, yeah, Israel is over there. And I was wondering how they're doing over there. They're catching hell over there, too. I was like, man, their discrimination is big over there, you know what I mean? Go ahead, read. To keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. And that shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder upon thy seed forever. Uh, for, for what? Forever. Man, hopefully we pray that the Lord take this away from us. But he said if you turn to him, he'll deal with you accordingly, right? Right. Well, um, for, we read to 46. Um, skip down to 64. You can read this on your own, the whole thing, but uh, we're getting to the point here. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. Mm-hmm. And there... And Ain't we all over this earth? Africa all over, right? All the way up in um, yeah, um, Putin know about us. Huh? <laughs> Russia, he know about us. He could tell you all about you. He could tell, give you the history. Go ahead. And there, the, and there thou shalt serve other gods, uh -huh. which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Like Christmas, right? What, what, um... A 400-pound man coming through a, um, a chimney. That's madness. And you have your child doing that foolishness, right? Your child said, no, nah, man, no, uh -uh. daddy, ain't see Santa Claus came through that chimney. <laughs> I saw you put all them gifts under that tree. You lying to me, mommy. You, you say you're you telling me I ain't supposed to lie, but you lie to me every day. <laughs> every Christmas you lie to me. And another thing, you know, um, about Christmas, you know, we worship all these other gods, 
And we don't want to keep God's feast days and, 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 and dietary law. But we, you know, when Christmas come about, man, we feel so bad. You know, why my daughter not coming to the Christmas party? Why my, my, my brother-in-law, my son-in-law ain't coming to the Christmas party? And you know how they cry. But what about the Lord feast day? Huh? The Passover. Are you going to come for that? You should be crying, right? To keep that. Because that's going to give you eternal life. Right? Read on. And among these nations shall thou find no ease. Uh -huh. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Uh -huh. But the Lord shall give thee a trembling heart and a felon of eyes and sorrow of mind. Mm -hmm. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Yes, and it do. Because every time you look at that bank account, you ain't sure you're going to make next month. Right? That mortgage interest going up and all that. You can't keep up. It's getting harder and harder every day. Right? Go ahead. And thou shalt fear day and night, mm -hmm. and shall have none assurance. Yeah, you fear they might come take that car. That house, you hide in that car. The back. You, not, you don't got it at the front. You got it all the way to the back. Yeah, you drive around, around the lawn, and you park that thing at the back, right? Hey, man, they might come get that car today. Yeah. They got my car one time. I ain't going to lie. They got my car. <laughs> I was working <laughs> construction. I didn't pay my note for two days, man. I mean, two weeks, because I had the weekly payment thing. And, you know, I didn't pay for two weeks. And, you know, I parked my car in the, um, the garage at, at the construction site. And, you know, I worked hard that day, man. I worked hard. I worked extra that day. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go, get my, go in my car, you know, put my tools in the car. I was like, wait a minute. I'm on the third deck, you know what I mean? I was like, man, wait a minute. Then I, I know I parked the car on the third deck. I know. So I was like, man, maybe something wrong with me today. I'm really tired. Let me go up on the, on the fourth deck and see where my car up there. I'm like, damn, I don't see my car up there. I was like, man, I got to go down to the first deck. I'm so wrong with me. I'm delirious. So I got out of there, man. I was like, no car, man. You don't understand? I had to walk from, from where I live all the way to Riverdale. Walk, because I didn't know nobody, I had no friend, none of that. I just moved to Atlanta, you know. But yeah, man, yeah, we fair. Go ahead, finish that up. And shall have non-assurance of thy life. Uh-huh. In the morning thou shalt say, with God if it were even. Uh-huh. And at even thou shalt say, with God if it were morning. Uh-huh, and but that's all it is, man. Because uh, you can't keep up. But Lord, hmm. keep, keep reading. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for thy sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Wait a minute. We didn't, went to, we didn't came out of Egypt with ships. So this Egypt represents something different, sister and brother. This, this Egypt represents this world. And then we got, then he said he's going to um, curse us seven times. And he said, we're going to flee seven ways. How many continents on this earth? Seven, seven. right? How many sea they got out there? Seven. seven. Ocean and all that, you know? But I call all them sea. Y'all can call them ocean and all that. <laughs> but it's all right. Go ahead. Because what the, the Lord said, the sea, the, right? He divided the water from Again the with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, mm -hmm. thou shalt see it no more again, and there... And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. Wait a women. minute, your enemy was sold for bond. And even though they had slavery in, in the world, but not according like this, how it's written. This is totally different. This is a sign between showing that you are Israel. Right? Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. Uh huh. Yeah, no man gonna buy you. They, and, and uh, all them, them billionaire Africa, why they don't come buy you out here? You go see what they drive over there, some of them, them African kings. Why they didn't come and say, hey, you know what, let's invest in the Israelites over here and bring them all back to uh, 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 Africa? They ain't doing that because you're not part of them. They know that too. Right? Um, Let's go to Isaiah, um, 
Isaiah. We're going to skip that Isaiah, right? We read it already. We read it already. All right. Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy 21. We're winding down, sister and brother. We got about 10 more, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're winding down. We're winding down. I hope that's the truth. Yeah, I, I think that's the truth. Let's, let's go. Go ahead, read. Do, get them. Deuteronomy 21. Yeah, go ahead. Verse, uh, Deuteronomy 21, verse 22. I'm talking too much, man. They're going to gonna let go of me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's all good, man. Um, I'm zealous for the word of God. I want y'all to, um, you know, to learn it with fun. Learn this word with excitement. Be excited for the Lord. Right? Go ahead, um, 22. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree. What? Hang him on a tree? Who that happened to? Jesus. It happened to Jesus, but it happened to us too. You heard that say that strange fruit that hanging on the tree? Yep. That was us. That happened to us, sister and brother. We, you know, they, they, they find us in a fault. Something they say we do, accuse her for something, and what? Next thing you're on that tree. But the only thing, re, you finished reading that? Verse 23. Uh huh. His body shall not remain all night. The only upon the thing, tree. your body remained there for a couple of days. That was the difference. Because they don't know the law of God. Finish reading that. Mm -hmm. But thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. Mm -hmm. For he that is hanged is accursed of God, mm -hmm. that the land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Bro, you was hanging on that tree, and them birds pick on you, them flies and whatnot. They, because you were there for an example for the others to see. Say, this going to happen to you if you, do, you flee again, if you step out of this, your boundary. I set boundary, and you step out of that. You're trying to run away. This is what's going to happen. So they leave you out there so your uh, family or, or your friends can see you. Right? Ain't that happened? No. All right. Let's go to Galatians, because it did happen to Jesus. Right? He, be he became a curse for us. Man, look how God loves you, man. He became a curse for you. Galatians. Galatians, the third chapter and one verse, verse 13. Read it when you get there. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, uh -huh. being made a curse for us, mm -hmm. for it is written, Curse is every one that hangeth on a tree. Mm -hmm. All right. So Jesus became a curse for us. Let's go to uh, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And we're going to pick it up at verse... 29 to, to 31, because we still, is, we still is people, man. Although we're going through all this here, man. Hopefully we turn from our wicked ways and acknowledge God, right? Because he still loves us, even though, he, you know, he put a good spanking on us, you know. I mean, this is some perfect punishment, man. And it seems like if you don't turn, you're still going to feel it, feel it. Go ahead, verse 29 to 31. Go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun, sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Mm -hmm. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Mm -hmm. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son All the other nations go mourn. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and Man, great glory. Man, this is like somebody who um, ain't see his wife, been in jail and he see his wife for a long time. So he's very happy to see his wife. Go ahead. Read on. And he shall send his angels with a great shout of a trumpet. Uh-huh. And they shall gather together his elect. Now, he what? His elect. He's still concerned about Israel. I thought he put, he would put you all away. But he still loves you. He called you the elect, the salt of the earth. Go ahead. From the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Mm -hmm. The first thing he coming, he coming and got Israel, right? 
Ain't that the truth? That's true. He gonna gather you, then he gonna gather all the nations. That's the love he got for you. Because he made a covenant with you. And he got to buy by that covenant. And he going to do that. Let's go to Joel, Joel the um, third chapter. We winding down, sister, but I know y'all falling asleep already. But this word is supposed to wake you up. I remember when I, man, the younger day, you give me this thing here, man, I'll be on the street for this book. Man, them brothers had to, they had to calm me down, man. They were like, chill, brother, slow down now. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I was out there, man. I was out there when they gave me this word. They couldn't stop me, man. But they show me a few things, you know. They show me I need to be humble and treat the people right. Uh, Joel, the third chapter. And we're going to read verse 1 to 7. Go ahead. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Now, that's why I'm saying he's going to gather you, Judah, or Israel. Go ahead. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Where? He going to gather them heathen? And what are you going to do? Are you, you going to give them a price for what they've done to you? And will plead with them there for my people. What? And for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations mm. and parted my mm -hmm. land. Mm -hmm. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. You know, um, back in my country, they got a the marketplace, they call it. The market is right next to the river, and you got the market. And that market there, if, if we, uh, we read the history about that market, that's where they were selling us at. But now we in there selling grocery. But that market was where they, where they sold us as slaves. Right? And, uh, and, and what? Read that verse 3 again. Go ahead. And they have cast lots for my people. Uh huh. They have given a. They bar gambled for, for you. Go ahead. They have given a bar for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. A little wine. Go ahead. Yea. And what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon and all the coast of Palestine? Mm -hmm. Will you render me a recompense? Palestine, not Palestine. Go ahead. And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily. Will I return your recompense upon your own head? Uh huh. Because you have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried it into your temples, my goodly, pleasant things. Mm -hmm. The children of also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that you. Who is the Grecians? The Greeks, right? But Romans, all of them, right? Go ahead. That you might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to stop right here. Skip down to 15. Go ahead. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall not withdraw, shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and order his voice from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And the heaven and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people. Wait a minute. The Lord, man, the Lord have a lot of love, man. This, this, this book here got a lot of love in it. I don't see why we shouldn't continue reading this book. This book have a lot of love for you. But the, the, the bad things that we see in the book is because of our cause. We've been against our God that we agree on. He keep his thing, you know, he keep his um, agreement. Go ahead. And the strength of the children of Israel. Finish that? That was verse 16. 16. Let's go to, um, see, he's trying to hurry me up, but oh. I got some more for you. <laughs> I ain't trying to hurry you up. Let's go to Zechariah 8 chapter. Zechariah the 8 chapter. Yeah, brother, hurry me up because they're they falling asleep around here, bro. Zechariah, the 8th chapter, and verse 21. You know, uh, I don't know how to measure this thing, but 
When I go to South and they say, I don't give them enough. When I come here, maybe I'll say, I give y'all too much. I don't know. I don't know how to measure this. It depends on how the Lord put it on me. So if you got a lot, then hey, the Lord told me to bring a lot here. You hear me? So please don't fall asleep. Because the Lord got a message for you today. And, and go ahead, um, verse 21 to 23. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, mm -hmm. Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. So are the nations going to come to Jerusalem and say, Let's go praise the God of Israel. We're going to go because um, he, the Lord, the, the, um, the, this is the true God. Right? Go ahead. I will go also. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem. Yeah, they're going to come. That's, you know, right now you don't see much Gentiles coming in the church. But when the Lord returns, they're going to be looking for you, Israel. They heard God is with you. And they're going to want to know more. Because you are the salt of the earth. And they, even though you're going to be saying, man, I'm an African-American how are you African-American? <laughs> can you get that on the GPS? Can, you put, can somebody put that in the GPS and see if you find out? Huh? African-America? You can't find that in the GPS. It don't exist. Go ahead. And to pray before the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is, that is a Jew, saying... Or, or Israel, saying what? We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Yeah, but he going to say, hey, look, man, I'm an African-American. I'm not no Jew. But he gonna, the Lord going to... They're going to slap in and say, look here, man, come on. I need a blessing. I need to go to Israel. Shut up. I don't want to hear that. I know your history. Yeah, they got some brother going, they're going to say that. Uh, I'm, I'm not no Jew, man. I'm an African-American. Who gave you that? Who told you that? that you know, where you got that from? What, what history book? Uh, where you get that from, you know? We finished that? Finished it. All right. All right. We winding down for show, show. Let's go to um, Romans, the 10th chapter. Because, you know, we got Israel out here, man, and they're very zealous of God's word. And they get overzealous. They get too salty. You know, they, they start adding to God's word. They, 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 um, treading for the Holy Ghost and all kind of stuff going on in these churches. Right? They, t uh, they call it tarrying for the Holy Ghost. That's what they be doing. <laughs> um, pick it up at verse 1 to Three. Go ahead. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is uh -huh. that they might be saved. Mm, what? Even Paul is looking at this thing deep, man. But what's wrong with our people? Go ahead, read. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Uh -huh. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going after to establish their own. Wait a minute. They, 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 they accepting the name. But what they doing, bro? They're going to they're gonna um, establish their own righteousness. Go ahead. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. What is the righteousness of God? Ain't that his laws, his judgment, and all that, sister and brother? Yes. Ain't that what we've been reading all day? Yes. But yeah, you know, the law say um, Israel is, is rich. But we, we're supposed to be rich with this word, sister and brother. That's what it's saying in Revelation, right? Revelation, the ninth chapter. I know the works and the tribulation and the poverty, but thou art rich. What the Lord is saying there? What the we word? are rich. We have this word. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. But we can't. one thing we can do is go establish our own righteousness. That's what we can't do. Let's go to um, Proverbs. Proverbs um, 
Proverbs, we're going to read one verse there. Proverbs 1 and verse 7. Let's see what knowledge is. Not according to the knowledge. Right? But this is how knowledge, this is how knowledge begins. This is when the Lord is going to accept you. Go ahead, read it, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You got to fear God first. Because if you don't fear him, you ain't going to serve him. And if you go establish your own righteousness, you don't fear God. You want to do your own business. Are you going after these people's money or what? You want that tied money come in your pocket? That's why you went to go establish your own righteousness? But it's because you don't fear God. Read that again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Uh -huh. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. And that's where the problem is. Colossians. Colossians, the fourth chapter. We're going to read. We got one more. We got one more. You got a little hope. But, this, this, you know, the, the sun don't go down till what? 10 o'clock? I don't know. Over here, probably <laughs> 9 o'clock. So I don't know. It, the... Um, the more you stay here, it's better for you, ain't it? Yep. You go home, man, you know, what, my, what might happen, you know what I mean? You might turn on that TV and watch something you ain't supposed to watch. You're watching, the, uh, what do you call that, that show that's so popular? I, 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 you can see I don't watch TV because I don't know what's going on there. Days of the Life or something like that. <laughs> you know? See, I don't watch TV, so I don't know what's going on. Y'all know what's going on. So that's why I want to keep y'all here. <laughs> keep you here so you don't go watch it. You'll be like, whoops. And now you, you don't want to give up. You, it's like, I'm here already. I might as well watch it. Yeah, go ahead and read verse 6. Go ahead. Let your speech be always with grace, mm -hmm. seasoned with salt. Yeah, you got to have this word. So when you go out to talk to people you had as well, you're able to guide them and, and tell them what thus say the Lord, right? Go ahead. That you may know how you ought to answer every man. Yeah. Remember, you got the answer, but you got to know how to answer that, that question. Right? You finished that? Yes, sir. All right, let's go to Philippians, the last place. Y'all get an understanding how did the system, brother? So... So now you know you're the salt of the earth. What you going to do? You're going to preserve the earth. You're going to preserve the people. You're going to clean them up. Right? You ain't making a covenant with me now. You're making a covenant with your God. All right. Um, Philippians, go ahead. Philippians, the first chapter in verse 20, 29. Read it. For unto you it is given in behalf of Christ. Mm -hmm. On the behalf of Christ is given unto you. Go ahead. Not only to believe on him, huh? but also to suffer for his sake. Wow. We got to do a little suffering. We got to go out there, you know, take, um, go and preach this word, pass some flyers or whatnot. We got to suffer a little bit for, for God's sake. Because we got to care about others, not just us. Right? Because right. they got to make it in the kingdom too. Right? It's not all about us. Like it's um, much is given. Much is required. Much is required. Go ahead. You finished that? I was finished. All right. Praise God. I hope y'all got something out of that. All right. We finished. We finished. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. All glory to God. All right. I hope y'all got something out of this. Uh,